Have you ever wondered how situations, events, people, songs, or even movies seem to speak to you and answers your burning question at that particular time? God speaks to us all the time, and we have to admit we do not always listen. To me and Rachel, through the years, we come to realize that God speaks to us all the time and that the world had some success on distracting us. Today, we share one of the many ways Jesus persistently and lovingly pursues us through the saints and their words. Not by choice, like most of us, St. John Paul II faced many real-life challenges. He was 20 years old when World War II began. I would often think how difficult it would have been to live during that time, wherein there is so much uncertainty. I remember my grandmother who always shared her experiences during the Second World War, how they were always running around trying to evade being captured or killed. I just could not imagine living in that time. That is why Rachel and I, together with our family, learn more of the life of the Saint Pope. We come to realize how his quotes on hope and courage are significantly meaningful even at this time. We love Saint John Paul II's words, Let us remember the past with gratitude, live the present with enthusiasm, and look forward to the future with confidence. How can one not be moved with these words, knowing that the one who said this became an orphan during the war, survived in a time of uncertainty, because he can die any time during that war, was an actor and persisted to become a priest, yet faced life with so much hope, enthusiasm, and passion. We have four sons, ages 23, 21, 15, and 8, and the two older ones were diagnosed with autism. Biboy and I met in Singles for Christ in Feb 1996. I proposed to her in June of the same year and we got married before the year ended. We were a very young couple, less than four years married, building a family with so much ahead of us when a diagnosis of our firstborn son, Rafael, came. At that same time too, I, was, I just gave birth to our second son, Miguel, but again, after one year and eight months, we discovered that Miguel too had autism. Uncertain and anxious of the future of our family then, I always prayed to God to first call back my sons to Him so as not to worry about them when B-Boy and I are in our advanced years, fearing of how they will be without us. Today, that we already have four sons, we are grateful for whatever challenges are first to have hurdled. Miguel is now in senior high, learning things that we never thought he would. But the family with special needs members continue a journey quite different in many ways. Rafael may be able to express himself, but he still has limitations. His emotions can still overcome his thoughts, leaving Rachel and I at times with some bruises or blue and black marks. We do not know how the future would be for them, but again, the message of hope, courage, and faith of Jesus through our St. John Paul II inspire us and lead us to joy despite all these. There is no school for parenting, and as we become one, we rely on our past and present, hoping that the future of our children can be as beautiful as it can be, as Jesus promised. The secret of happiness is to live moment by moment and to thank God for all that He, in His goodness, sends us day after day. These are very beautiful and meaningful words of St. Gianna Beretta Mola, a physician who advocated life, refused abortion and hysterectomy for herself, even if it meant losing her own life. Just like any family, we all have our own set of challenges. Some big, others small, but even the small ones, if they come one after the other or come together, can pose a challenge and put a strain on the family. 
However, one thing that we always remind each other is to be grateful and at the same time to be happy. We always count our blessings. When there are things that limit us, things we cannot do for some reason, B-Boy reminds our family, especially our boys, reasons to be grateful. He always mentions people whom God sent to us who have helped us and supported us in times of our needs. He tells our children to always pray for them and that if God allows them to pay forward such blessings but to also bless those who have blessed us. But it doesn't limit us there too. Moment by moment, we ask our children to spread a message of hope and happiness, especially to others whom we do not know. And B-Boy doesn't only communicate these things in words, but even in his actions. I just noticed one day of how my sons would open the door for others in a mall, let women and elderly go first through doors or escalators, and help people we, we do not even know without our prompts. I realized that it was because it was modeled by B-Boy. We just have to count the many blessings that comes our way every day that would dwarf the many problems and difficulties. Everything shall pass, but the love of God will always see us through. This gratitude and joy of discovering Jesus' immense love must never be kept to ourselves. We realize that keeping it to ourselves was never our purpose. This love is meant to be shared to everyone. Pope St. Paul VI said that evangelizing is in fact the grace and vocation proper to the church, her deepest identity. She exists in order to evangelize. And our family and you are all part of this church. Today, we continue to serve our church through Couples for Christ. We strive to fulfill our purpose through our mission work, serving in the Americas and other areas we are called through this community. But any work or even a attempt of spreading Jesus' love and mercy will be challenged and tested by the evil one. I have seen this even in my younger years as my parents too are missionaries for Couples for Christ. The lives of saints and these very powerful words from another saint pope keeps our focus, keeps us moving forward even when we are challenged. I could still remember when B-Boy called me to say that we were called to serve in the Middle East to a country that I have never even heard of. Normally, we would talk about this and pray before giving it a final answer. But something at that moment was very different. He called not to seek prayers, but to just inform me. But looking back, I realize how grateful we are to have responded to that call. From then on, our prayers include having the courage to continue with our yes till we are called back to our true home. We believe that being created in God's image and likeness meant being a gift whenever and wherever we are called. And this is also true for our children as we bring them with us as much as possible when we do mission work. You know, they share our story, help in setting up our needs like laptops and even extension cords and being our prayer warriors. But even in this time of restrictions, they help in preparing our testimony from content to this video. Their valuable support in all our mission work make us gladly say that we are a missionary family, a family of evangelizers living our truth. As we have shared earlier, our family with special needs children go through a journey which we find solely unique to us. As we continue to serve each other in the family, share our lives to others with the prayer of blessing and inspiring them, we remember always the words of Saint Zeli and Louis Martin of how the happiness of family is the beauty that brings us closer to God, and that in our families it is necessary that the heroic becomes daily and that the daily becomes heroic you know fights and arguments happen still happen in our family but you know i have four boys 
in their stage of life, emotions can still overcome them. And when Raphael would get highly anxious, heroic acts from our other boys meant putting down everything, and I mean everything, to attend to him. For a moment, I felt how everyone and everything seemed to be centered on him, and now how I find it unfair at times. But then we realized that if this heroic and saintly love is what is needed to show Raphael we love him, then we continue to seek the mercy and love of Jesus to help us. The love we share in the family, saintly and heroic as we pray it to always be, would be the same love that will fuel us to be a gift to others. We say that one cannot give what one does not have. Our families are the best teachers of love and heroism that will lead us to saintly lives. As St. Therese of Calcutta said, Not all of us can do great things, but we can do small things with great love. The acts of love and heroism we show each other goes to everything we do as a family, and eventually to the greater family of Christ. We remind each other that we do this as we are all gifts. That is, we remind each other that we maintain to keep the house orderly so others can work and study comfortably, be mindful to keep quiet so someone can rest, and to share food no matter how little. These are just some of our small deeds accompanied with great love. I think I'd like to share how B-Boy um, taught our children of sharing no matter what. He taught our family of how everything is a gift from God and must be cherished. At times, he would bring home like, for example, two donuts. He has taught the children that this, um, these two donuts are to be shared by all of them. But if, even if there was only one burger that she, he brought home, it, is, it would still be shared among the four of them. Until we realized that one of them would give up his share, seeing the other one, usually the younger one, likes it. This act has been heroic for us and does not only translate to sharing of food, but even in sharing of chores and time. One seems to save the other if he feels that the other has other things to do. These are just some of the Team Arguelles' favorites. And as we discover the lives of every saint, we intentionally and continuously ask ourselves how their example could help us to live a Jesus-centered life. The words of Jesus through their quotes remind us constantly of His love and mercy that we prayerfully, in turn, share to others. We encourage you to know the saints and discover ways Christ pursues you. Our past does not matter. Jesus desires that we start our saintly future today. Prayers for you and your family, may we always remember to put Jesus at the center of our lives. God bless all of you.